so we're just gonna start from the refrain. I could have danced all night. I could have danced all night and still have begged for more. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things I've never done before. Yeah, so I offer piano lessons and I offer voice lessons. I have a business where I'm teaching private music lessons to students, um, children and adults. So as young as around six years old, like kindergarten, first grade, um, into like 70s and 80s. So I have a lot of adults, 20 somethings out of college and people who have multiple jobs somehow making time for it. So. I always loved to sing. My family couldn't shut me up. Like I was actually really shy and quiet. I wouldn't really talk very much as a kid, but I would always sing to every soundtrack in the car and things. Um, it just kind of fell in my lap. I started voice lessons young, always did it. I did chorus, um, musicals. And when it got to high school and you know junior year, everyone's talking about what they want to major in already. and. My parents were doctors, they had no musical background, and they were just like very supportive and incredibly understanding and they honestly didn't want me to go into the medical field at all. And um, I just kind of felt like that was the only thing for me. I always loved performing and musical theater. I didn't study music education um, in college, I just didn't think I wanted to be a public school teacher. So I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in performance, which is a very classical background, so it's basically studying to be an opera singer or a classical singer. Um, so taking multiple languages, uh, French, Italian, German, singing in those languages. But I found um, as a musician you need to have multiple jobs and I wound up teaching anyway once I was out of my master's. Um, and I really liked the one-on-one -on -one environment and I realized I don't have to teach a classroom, I could still be a great teacher and just work one-on-one -on -one with these students and really see them grow and work with them individually outside of a school program. And that's where I decided I was more interested in that than performing. Um, but my performing background, um, I did a lot of like, operas and things like that um, through school, a little bit professionally. Um, before the pandemic, my biggest gig was working for the Philadelphia Orchestra. So I was a chorister for that and that was cool. Um, it was a great way to go out before 2020. <laughs> um, so in 2019, I sang um, at the Kimmel Center a couple times as a chorister, and um, I still really enjoy performing and hope to do it again. Um, I've met some musicians in the area. Um, Landon Pierre, he's like a an organist at the church right on the corner. So I'm working on having a recital there actually for my kids. But I really enjoy teaching and preparing my students for roles. Um, I have some high school students right up here at, um, up the road at Voorhees and they're doing crazy for you so I'm helping students prepare for that and um, even college auditions one of them wants to study musical theater so I'm, I'm helping with that and um, yeah I find myself teaching a lot more contemporary musical theater styles which I'm a big Broadway nerd so I love even though it's not my my background um, and classical piano and singing it's sort of just translates and helps any style that you're doing. I, I find that it's really important to have piano and voice kind of go hand in hand. So um, now I have students playing Chopin and I'm like, all right, go off. And <laughs> it's really cool. So um, I actually do have a lot more piano students now than voice um, between the pandemic and just young students being interested in it. So that's been really fun. And Nice legato in there too, playing them smooth and connected. Cool, let's try the left hand. Almost, almost. So on the way down, you're just gonna tuck. Yeah. A lot of misconceptions or hesitations that I get with some students are that they have to be able to read music before they come here 
or that I expect it immediately or that they have to sound perfect. I mean, if they sounded amazing to begin with, they wouldn't need me. Um, I, I tend to stress the importance of reading music for my voice students and piano students, but at the same time, I, you know, I still encourage all different styles. With piano, sometimes I have my students improv. Um, some of them are really young or have special needs like ADHD where they don't really want to sit at a piano and, and read and we sort of need to be, you know, more accommodating to those students. So I get a little more creative and that's another time where I use some resources <laughs> and research a little bit. Um, but especially my adult students, they are incredibly brave that they come and they're always so hard on themselves like not having time to practice. Yeah, actually not having time to practice is usually the biggest fear of my students. And for the most part, yeah, of course you're gonna be better when you practice, but it's still important to show up to the lesson, even if you haven't, especially if you're having a bad day and sometimes that'll just flip things around. You know, you get a 30 minute session to forget about whatever happened at school or at work with your family and you're there. Um, you know, I think it's more important to sort of have that experience one-on-one -on -one with me and grow from that. And it's not something that I'm, you know, a real strict um, stickler for necessarily, um, but a studio that's more about the joy of music than doing competitions. I have parents who've always been like, what level of piano are they at? When do they complete piano? When are they done? And it's an art, you're never done with it. And the biggest thing as far as wanting to be a teacher and wanting to continue is probably seeing my students perform. Um, so especially, I can't wait for this first recital with my new studio because the faces of my students when they perform and when they finish performing, especially when they're done and they can relax, and the smiles that I get when they're walking off the stage are just priceless. So that's that's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, for the most part, what I do is I teach how to be a soloist, as a pianist or as a singer, and they get a lot of that um, experience working in an ensemble when they're in chorus or something at school. Um, in the past, my students were in the Princeton Girl Choir, which is like a kind of elite program where they can do more choral music after school. Um, but for the most part, it's just a very different style. I actually personally had an issue where I sang choral music all through college, and it was so much about blending and having this very straight tone sound, like that, where there's no vibrato. And it's really important to have that when you're in this elite choir, a cappella, and it's all about tuning and perfection. But if you perform as a soloist, it's completely different. You need to stand out. So it's a very different sound. Yeah, especially with my singers, I just find that I don't really have any problems teaching any style. I grew up with a lot of teachers, even in college, who they kind of turn their nose up at teaching popular styles. Um, I have a student who wanted to sing Ariana Grande, and I'm like, you know what? They're gonna do it no matter what, so I might as well teach them how to do it healthily in my studio. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I'm, I'm doing this for the joy of performing and, and making music with people, so. Ooh.